Greetings, guys. Well, we all love a good comeback story, don't we? And I've got one for you here. You may remember me reviewing this guy a couple videos ago, the Launch Sea Reader 8011. I was contacted by the manufacturer, and they are well familiar with what we do on the channel here. And quite honestly, the reader just didn't live up to the sort of expert level diagnostics that we do on this channel. This thing is great for your average parts changer who looks up codes and changes changes plugs and wires anyway, which means you don't actually need this if you think about it. But they did ask me to help them with a redemption and redeem themselves they did. They listened very carefully to the video and the objections that I had on this device and recommended that I try their upgraded level device, the CRP Touch Pro. And I have been using this for approximately a week now and I must say, redemption is thine. This is a great tool and we're going to show you some of the features of it. And this car behind me, it's a, uh, I don't know, 2002, I think, Ford Focus, has a rough idle problem. And we're going to use this to diagnose the problem and show that it actually does have practical application in advanced diagnostics. Let's look at what you get with the kit and how much it costs. One thing for sure that Launch does is include some really nice carrying cases, which actually I like. I have a couple of code readers similar to this one that I use for portability when I'm doing mobile diagnostics instead of bringing my whole computer with me. And having the case is actually kind of important for protecting the tool and keeping everything together. But we've got a pretty good instruction pad, much better than the previous one, much more detailed on the features. We also have a quick start guide, of course, the ALDL cable. We also have a charging setup and the tool itself, and it all fits nice into the case. The kit goes for $499 on Amazon, and one of the main differences with this thing is that it is Android-based, so it actually has, let's go ahead and turn it on here, you can hear it has sound, it also has a microphone. You can use it very much like any Android device. It's very much like having an iPad or an iPhone or an Android phone. And you can see that there's all kinds of tools here. It's got all kinds of apps loaded on. And you can access the internet through it. You can do your email through it, which I actually really like. That actually is important to me. When I'm doing field diagnostics and things, I do like to have communication so I can email bills to the customers, things like that. So I've always brought my computer with me. Now I just have everything all in one single device that I can use. I was actually playing around with it, uh, just surfing the internet last night actually, kind of like with my iPad. Many of the objections that I had with the previous tool are certainly compensated for in this device. We do have enhanced parameter identification capability, and we also have much improved graphing capability. Those were my two main objections with the previous device. This one really does a pretty good job of accommodating for those objections. So as you can see, there's various things where you can set up your profile. Golo is basically a messaging service where you can connect with other users, get some diagnostic help and everything. I'm not much of a network guy, so I don't do that. We've also got free updates available for the software. The device operates very much like an iPad, as you see, very friendly to use. File manager, you are able to save videos that you make of the screenshots or just picture screenshots, either one. I really like the live video recording. That was an objection on the other tool that you can't go back and research the stuff as easily. On this, you very easily can load up data again. You'll also notice we have an external XD card available, various tools like alarm clock, stuff like that. So what we can do is it really doesn't matter to go through a lot of these apps and everything. They're pretty similar, most of them, to your smartphone apps. But what we would do is go into the reader through this tool here, and let's look at some of the features that we have. So as you can see, there are some thumb pad buttons on the tool, but it is just so much easier to use the touch screen, which is incredibly responsive and smooth. 
This will be a Ford here. Uh, major difference again we're going to see is there will be enhanced parameters available. We can also do generic OBD2. On this screen, we can do automatic search or manual searches for the vehicle. I've always found it to be able to automatically find the vehicle with just a little bit of help. It'll probably ask uh, model year, things like that, but a lot quicker than doing the manual search. And we can choose 2002, and it's asking for the VIN number. Uh, this is uh, 1FA. And now it'll start loading up all the available modules. While these are loading, keep in mind, uh, while we are going to get the enhanced parameters and everything, this tool is unidirectional. It does have some bidirectional tests, like system tests, EVAP tests, but you don't have true bidirectional capability on individual components. And for a tool at $500, again, you would never expect that. That would be $1,000 or more for such features. Uh, as you can see, we can look through the various systems available, and we are going to go to the powertrain module, and it's asking turbocharger, certainly not one on this. This is kind of an old lady's car, uh, actually. And as you can see, we can read fault codes. Uh, there are actually no fault codes on here because the check engine light isn't on. And that is going to make the diagnosis a little more challenging, of course, because we don't have a code direction. You can see you can clear the codes, read the data stream. Let's go to the data stream. And if you watched the previous video, I'm hoping you're noticing how quick and responsive this thing is versus the other tool. And as you can see, we do have enhanced parameters available here. So we can, um, I'm just going to show some of the features real quick because one of the main things we want to be able to have is obviously not only this, the enhanced parameters, but also the graphing capability. I kind of, you know, it's really important for the advanced diagnostics. So let's look at, let's say, throttle position and uh, just some things without the car running right now. We'll start it up in uh, just a little bit. To mass airflow, we can do air intake temperature. You can also press this button and select everything. The white box clears your selections. I uh, kind of want one more here. Let's do fuel rail pressure. Good reason for a rough idle there. So you'll notice that the refresh rates are very quick. We can see our throttle position voltage there, and it's extremely responsive, immediate response as I'm adjusting throttle position here. A couple of the other features we have here, we've got the recording button here, the little film reel, which will take live video recording of the actual screenshot. The information button, this is actually used if there's DTCs, which we don't have on this car right now. But what you do is select the DTC, push the information button, it'll give you a little background on the DTC, a list of things that, quite honestly, for most of your parts clowns playing the lottery at AutoZone, it'll generate a shopping list for them and they can cross their fingers that one of those things will fix the car. Of course, for viewers of this channel, it's going to basically help you to systematically narrow down the variables for that code so that you can get to your definitive diagnosis. And then, of course, there's people like me who are uh, not much for following directions, so I'm actually not going to use that feature when we do the diagnosis here. Very important feature right here is the graphing. So on the graphs, all the graphs will show up on the same page here. You can also click a graph to zoom in on it, which is kind of nice. Now, still, you don't have adjustability on the graph with the amplitude, which is, quite honestly, you got to take a little bit of points off on that. One thing it does have, though, that I like is it has min-max alarm settings. So we can set various alarms here. As a matter of fact, let's go back here. And let's choose the throttle position sensor, and we can set, say, a max alarm of, say, 2 volts. You can hear... 
when we go over the voltage, it does sound an alarm. I actually really like that because when I'm working on a car that's having, say, an overheat condition, I like to set the alarm for if the car is overheating and I'm a little bit busy with the diagnostic and I'm not really paying attention to the engine temperature, having the alarm really helps. But again, you do not have ways of changing the amplitude here. And then just one other little thing about it is that the graphing, you can only have two things combined at one time. So for example, if I want to move up here and I want to graph my throttle position versus mass airflow, which would be a legitimate diagnostic, there's no way that I can really combine those two together. When I push this, it's just going to choose the first two items that were graphed, which was my rail pressure and my air intake. So in order to do that, I have to go back. I would have to clear my selections and then choose my two items that I want to graph together. I can still choose other things too, but if I want to graph those, I'll need my throttle position and my math and then get my graph, combine the graph. There's my throttle position against mass airflow. Again, look at the responsiveness. Absolutely astounding. But again, no ability to set amplitudes. One other really nice thing is you can multitask with the tool. So if you wanted to maybe look at one of my videos to see what PIDs we might want to pull up, we can just choose this button. You can select through various things like going to Google or whatever. We can bounce back to our tool here. So really kind of a nice feature. What we're going to do now is let's see if we can use this tool to actually apply diagnostic capability and solve this rough idle on this car, which I'm pretty sure is going to be a vacuum leak. So let's go ahead and start the car. All right, it starts right up. And I can tell you it does have a rough idle for sure. So what we might want to do is go back. We might want to read fault codes. Again, there were no fault codes on here. So we can go back to our data stream and let's clear out everything. Um, obviously, I am going to do uh, long-term fuel trim as my first thing, I believe. Well, actually, let's see if we've got some misfire counts, first of all. Although it doesn't feel like it's really misfiring. It's just kind of a... This may be an engine mount, actually, I hate to say. But let's see what we get. Um, I'd like to get uh, engine misfire currently detected. Let's get, uh, of course, some fuel trim for sure. Actually, I'd like to get rail pressure. This car has actually been here before, and I replaced the fuel pump on it. You might remember that video. I actually bought the wrong fuel pump the first time and never got to show the fix. Uh, well, this is the fix. The, the car is running again after the no start, um, but maybe it's having a, another fuel pump problem. There's fuel rail pressure. And then I uh, really want my long-term fuel trim. There we go. And of course, uh, short-term fuel trim should be down here. Okay, I think that's all the data I need. And the bottom line is that I've got enough data to be able to easily make any professional diagnosis. May give me a little bit of time to make graphs. So check it out, no misfires detected. Um, but look at the long-term fuel trim. That is a little bit concerning there and it's not uh, being compensated for right now by short term. So that is the actual long-term fuel trim. So we do have uh, what may be a vacuum leak here. So what we want to do, of course, is graph this. Now, of course, to do that, I am going to have to back up. Oh, I forgot about the fuel rail pressure. I wanted to check that and make sure, yeah, my fuel pump is working great. So it is certainly not going to be a fuel delivery issue. Could be an injector issue, though. So we want to go back. And let's just get some data to do the fuel trim analysis here. So what we're going to want to do is curve the long-term trim against engine speed. I think I passed engine speed. And long-term fuel trim there. I also might want to get short-term fuel trim up there as well. But that will do my curve graph for me. All right. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and graph those, and it 
is going to be easier if I combine those. So I've got my engine speed against fuel trim. And you can see the auto adjust is very intelligent. And I don't like that at all. Wow, so this is not a vacuum leak indeed. Um, but I will tell you, it doesn't feel like an engine mount either. That is definitely engine related. And right now the engine is really kind of struggling. But we can see that there is definitely not a vacuum leak there. So you know what? We will do another video where we will use this tool to actually diagnose what is wrong with this car. But we can confirm very clearly that that is not a vacuum leak. And what I want to do is go back and look for misfires because right now this car is running terrible. So let's go to those uh, engine misfire count, clear everything else out. I'm just interested in that right now and see if we can catch some misfires. No, um, is there a misfire history? Actually, it would be showing current misfires right now the way it's running pretty rough. Let's go back and read the fault codes and you can see my tendency to rush towards diagnostics. No fault codes, so that is interesting. This is definitely an engine problem though, so we will look into that. Let's go back one more time. And let's just check, uh, I want to graph the fuel rail pressure against load. How nice having fuel rail pressure as an enhanced pit, by the way. So let's go there and then let's combine these. Definitely not a fuel pump problem. Clearly not. All right, well, anyway, let's get back to closing out this video and then we'll do another video where we will figure out what the problem with this car is using this tool. All right, guys, here is the bottom line. This guy does meet the minimum criteria for the features required to do the types of diagnostics that I do on this channel. One of the most often things I'm asked is what is a good entry level tool that isn't very expensive that will allow people to learn to do the types of things we do on this channel. Well, I am telling you this is an absolutely viable option and I have been using this thing quite a bit and to be honest with you, I really do like it and I will probably be using this in some future videos as well when I just don't want to go through the trouble of setting up my full scan tool or I won't need bi-directional capabilities whatever so really really good consideration if you're in the market for something to do some of these advanced diagnostics so if you want more information on the tool I will put a link to it I also really want to thank the folks at launch again they are not paying me to do this they simply asked to have a chance at redemption and they have lived up to it. I am not being compensated for this video and I have to say they've been very responsive, very good with communication and uh, in my impression, a very good company. So I have to think that you would also get a lot of support if you were to have any issues. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful and we will see you on the next video and fix this car.